Welcome to Tech Talks. Our admin edition today is focused on seamlessly searching your data wherever it lives. Tech Talks is a series of short webinars that are deep dives for technical practitioners. We value you, our customer, and want you to continue in our Splunk journey. Our experts help create these best practices, want you to leverage them in your daily role. I'm Srinivas Boba, a principal product manager for Splunk platform, and I'm excited to share an overview and details of federated search. Today, we're going to talk about where your data lives and how to gain visibility across Splunk deployments with federated search. How to configure federated search. We will check out a demo of federated search in action, and then we will cover additional resources available to help you take advantage of federated search capabilities in Splunk. Our team will be available for Q&A throughout this session. And if you watch a recorded version of this webinar, please continue the conversation to the Tech Talk discussions in the Splunk community. As you can see here, your data lives in variety of locations and environments. It can be your on-prem location in a data center, it can be in Splunk Cloud. It can be in your own private cloud or one of the public cloud service providers, essentially BYOL. But the thing which you are missing here is that there's no seamless way to access this data across different deployments. And this is where federated search comes into picture. Introducing the federated search that enables you to provide a unified search across multiple Splunk deployments. And these deployments can be multiple on-prem deployments or cloud deployments or a combination of them. It essentially enables you to provide a true single pane of glass search experience. As you can see below, we are searching across two different cloud environments. The communication is via searchers of the two deployments. We will talk more about in the upcoming slides. Let's look at the different categories of configurations. Federated search provides a new intuitive search experience across multiple Splunk environments. That can be cloud to cloud, that can be between on-prem and a cloud deployment, or it can be between multiple on-prem deployments. It essentially enables you to unlock brand new cross-functional insights by breaking down data silos with cross-stack analytics for a unified search experience. You can also seamlessly manage security requirements across environments with role-based access control. Let's take a look at the use cases for federated search can enable you. The first and foremost is security investigations. Organizations are evolving and cloud migration efforts lead to multiple on-prem Splunk deployments and cloud deployments. And SOC analysts need to do an investigations for notable events across these disparate deployment types. And federated search enables you to do this seamlessly. The existing mechanisms to search across these deployments is not optimal due to operational and privacy concerns. The second use case is essentially efficient IT environment scaling. IT environments have trouble scaling and as companies grow and add new functions, each with, each with their own Splunk deployment and analysts needs a way to search across these disparate deployments. Let's look at how to configure federated search and run a federated search. Essentially, federated search can be run with simple, four simple steps. Before we go into each step, and let me take a talk about what FSH and RSH is. FSH is federated search. Ed. This is the search ed where the search is originating from. And RSH is remote search ed. 
this is the search of this Splunk deployment receiving the request from. Um, before I go into the four steps, I do want to call out all the below four steps can be configured via self-service UI. So you don't have to go to the conf files and do any of these uh, changes. You can seamlessly log into your Splunk deployment, go to UI and configure that. The four different steps are, first step is really essentially creating a service account on the remote deployment. This is the account we use to communicate between the two deployments. And the second step is establishing a connection to the remote deployment with the service account we just created in step one. And step three is creation of a federated index. This is the index on the remote deployment, which you're going to search across. And finally, you run a federated search. Let's take a look at each step. Step one is essentially service account creation on the remote search head. So you log into the remote search head. This is the remote deployment you want to search on and you can create a service account to the UI as shown here. This service account will be leveraged for communication between the federated search head and the remote search head. And you can define permissions at the service account level. So you can decide who has access to what kind of indexes. Step two is essentially establishing a connection to the remote deployment. You just created a service account. Now you can use that service account to create a connection to the remote deployment and search on the remote deployment. As you can see here, you can log into the remote current, um, the federated search head, the search head where you're searching from. And um, then you can make a connection to the remote deployment by creating a provider. This information on the federated search head helps make the connection to the remote deployment. As you can see here, you specify a name, you specify the host of the remote deployment and use the service account you just created. And essentially that will enable you to create a connection. And if you are on an on-prem deployment, you can see a stanza created automatically on a configuration file called federated.config. And below is an example of that stanza. Once you create a service account and once you create a uh, connection to the remote deployment with the service account you created, the next step is essentially creating a federated index. Federated index is nothing but a reference to the remote index. As you can see here, you create a name for federated index and you, you select the provider when you create it in step two, and then you choose the remote data set. It, right now we support index and data saved searches. So you can specify the index which you want to query on the remote side or saved search. And this translates into a stanza in, a, in the indexes.conf as you can see here. And finally, once you create a service account, create a connection and create a Federated index, which is referencing to the remote data set, you can seamlessly search across these two deployments. The key difference, as you can see, is a new command called federated colon. That indicates that this is a federated search query. Now let's dive into a demo that allows you to search across two different deployments. I have two deployments here. Uh, one deployment, as you can see here, 163.72, this is what I'm referring as federated search head. And I have a, a, another deployment called um, here, which is acting as a remote deployment. So the first thing I will do is create a service account on this deployment, which is a remote deployment. So the best way to create is, a, is a create a service account and for the demo purposes, I went ahead and created a user called federated user. This is the user I'm going to use to do the communication between this deployment and the federated search deployment. So now let me go back to the federated search deployment, which is this one. 
and here I can go to settings and ferreted search. Once I go here, I have two different tabs here. One is called what we call as ferreted providers. And this is where I can create a ferreted provider, essentially create a connection to the remote deployments. This screen is similar to the one we saw earlier in the slides. You specify the provider type, right now it's only Splunk, and you give a name to it, and you give the remote host name and the port and the service account you just created on the remote deployment. And by default, we always run in the context of uh, search and reporting app, but you can choose which app you want to do. And you can essentially create a provider. Uh, for our purposes, I went ahead and created a federated provider called remote deployment one, and it is talking to a remote host with this port. And this is the federated underscore user account we just created and it is running under an application context of search. Once the provider is created, you go and create a ferreted index. So uh, ferreted index creation is like you specify the index name and you specify the remote deployment you're connecting to, and then you specify the data set type you're going to search across. Currently, you support two different data set types. One is index and saved search. So this index is referencing to the index on the remote deployment. And similarly, the saved search is also referring to the saved search on the remote deployment. For our demo purposes, I went and created one index called remote underscore index underscore df. It is talking to a remote deployment, which is what we configured. And uh, the data set type it, it is referring to is an index called index underscore df underscore one. Let me show you the index which I'm referring to in the remote deployment. So this is the index on the remote deployment, which I want to search using ferreted search. Now going back to our ferreted search head, I can actually start searching this particular index using a simple query. As you can see here, index is equal to federated colon remote underscore index search stats count by client, client IP. The key difference is the federated colon that enables you to search across two different deployments. That's as simple as searching on two different deployments. We are about ready to wrap up this tech talk, but before we do, I wanted to share a quick resources available to you to continue your journey. You will receive these assets in a follow-up email as well as the recording you just saw. So we have a training and certifications and we have federated search documentation available for you. Finally, don't forget that we have an incredible community of Splunk users on our community site. You can search the answer section on Pirated Search. You can con continue the conversation for this talk within the discussion section called Tech Talks. And finally, there is Splunk Ideas, where you can submit new product enhancements or vote for current ideas for, from other customers. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to join us today. You will receive these asserts in the follow-up email as well as recording. Please tune back in for the future tech talks. We are excited to share the series with you. Thank you.